This is Amelia Gamel. I'll be looking at the first few pages of a chapter about metamorphism and metamorphic rocks from an earth science college textbook. While reading, I'll be applying some active reading strategies to help me construct meaning and be able to remember and use the information later. I should mention, I already have a purpose for my reading because I've previewed the chapter and chapter title page to see the outline as well as the chapter questions and skim through the introduction. Before I begin reading, I always count the number of pages in the chapter so I know the kind of time commitment I'm looking at. This chapter has 14 pages, not including the chapter summary, and review questions at the end. Although I'll only be reading through one page right now, my brain already knows exactly what information I'll be looking for and will be on high alert to find it as I move through the remainder of the chapter. Let's begin. The Agents of Metamorphism the three principal agents of metamorphism are heat, pressure, and fluid activity. I'm going to underline those because they seem important. Time is also important to the metamorphic process because chemical reactions proceed at different rates and thus require different amounts of time to complete. This seems important as well. And although I don't have a lot of background knowledge about this topic, I can connect the idea of time to the process of baking. I know it takes a lot more time to bake a pie than it does to bake cornbread because the ingredients will proceed to cook at different rates. So this makes sense to me. I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. Reactions involving silicate compounds. Oh, silicate. That's an unfamiliar word. I suspect it's a content-specific term. If I think this word is important, I could look for it in a glossary, or wait to see if clues are given to determine what it is. I think I'll keep reading. Reactions involving silicate compounds are particularly slow, and because most metamorphic rocks are composed of silicate minerals, there's that word again, it is thought that metamorphism is a very slow geologic process. During metamorphism, the original rock, which is an equilibrium, oh, I know what equilibrium means, but it's not a part of my everyday talk. I would probably use the word balance. I'm going to go ahead and just jot that in, right over the text. Let me reread that. During metamorphism, the original rock, which was an equilibrium, or balance, with its environment, meaning that it was chemically and physically stable under those conditions, undergoes changes to achieve equilibrium, or balance, with its new environment. These changes may result in the formation of new minerals, a change in the texture of the rock, or both. In some instances, the change is minor. I'll go ahead and underline that. And features of the original rock can still be recognized. In other cases, the rock changes so much that the identity of the original rock can be determined only with great difficulty, if at all. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a visual to help myself understand a little bit more clearly. I kind of see it like this. Here's the rock mm, during metamorphism. And then it kind of goes through a change with its new environment. Go ahead and jot that in with new environment. And then sometimes there are minor changes. And put the rock here. And other times there are a lot of changes. That's kind of how I'm seeing it. I see this next section is titled heat. I remember heat was mentioned above as one of the three principal agents of metamorphism. Go ahead and just kind of underline that and put a line to the top, kind of an arrow, indicating that it was mentioned above. Heat is an important agent of metamorphism because it increases the rate of chemical reactions that may produce minerals different from those in the original rock. Heat may come from lava, magma, or as a result of deep burial in the crust due to subduction, it's an unfamiliar word, 
along with the convergent plate boundary, and another unfamiliar word. When I see unknown words, I can look to see if it's in the glossary, like with silicate, or I can look for parts I know, or think if the word sounds like another word I know. Sub means under or down, so that kind of gives me a clue what the word might be about. Convergent sounds like converge, which means to bring together. So those give me clues about the word. I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. When rocks are intruded by bodies of magma, they are subjected to in intense heat that affects the surrounding rock. The most intense heating usually occurs adjacent. That's another word I wouldn't use in my everyday talk. I'm going to cross that out, and I would use the words next to. So it would read like this. The most intense heating usually occurs next to the magma body and gradually decreases with distance from the intrusion. The zone of metamorphosed rock that forms in the country rock adjacent or next to an intrusive igneous body is usually distinct and easy to recognize. It is known that temperature increases with depth. That sounds important. Temperature increases with depth. Some rocks that form at the surface may be transported to great depths by subduction. That word again. Along with a convergent plate boundary and thus subjected to increasing temperature and pressure. During subduction, some minerals may be transformed into other minerals that are more stable under higher temperature and pressure conditions. I see this next section is titled Pressure. I remember again that pressure was mentioned above as one of the three principal agents of metamorphism. I'm going to go ahead and underline this word pressure with another arrow that tells me it was mentioned at the very beginning. During burial, rocks are subjected to increasingly greater pressure. It's probably important. Just as you feel greater pressure, the deeper you dive in a body of water. I definitely can understand that. Whereas the pressure you feel is known as hydrostatic pressure. Oh, again, I, I don't really know the word hydrostatic, but I do know that hydro means water, so I understand that. Whereas the pressure you feel is known as hydrostatic pressure because it comes from the water surrounding you. Rocks undergo lithostatic pressure. I'm not familiar with that either. Which means that the stress, force per unit area, on a rock in the Earth's crust is the same in all directions. Well, that explained what lithostatic pressure is. The stress, force per unit area, on a rock in the Earth's crust is the same in all directions. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a visual again, maybe here at the bottom. So here is a rock seeing some pressure coming in all different directions. Maybe I'll make a note of that with an arrow. Stress. In all directions. From the weight of overlying rocks, maybe. I'll have to keep reading. A similar situation occurs when an object is immersed in water. For example, the deeper a cup composed of styrofoam is submerged in the ocean, the smaller it gets because pressure increases with depth and is exerted on the cup equally in all directions, thereby compressing the cup. I think I can make a visual of that so I remember. I'm kind of picturing the cup, and then when it's in the ocean, as it becomes submerged deeper, the cup becomes smaller because of the pressure in all directions, compressing the cup. That makes sense. I see there's a figure here that demonstrate lithostatic pressure. I'm going to go ahead and read the caption. Lithostatic pressure is applied equally in all directions. 
in the earth's crust due to the weight of the overlying rocks. That's important. Thus, pressure increases with depth as indicated by the sloping black line. I see that here. I see that these arrows are indicating that the pressure is coming in all directions and that it increases with depth. The image below at the bottom here shows how the water pressure compressed the styrofoam cups and confirms my thinking in my drawing above. Although I've moved to the bottom of the page, I haven't yet encountered the fluid activity, the third principal agent of metamorphism. But let's review some of the strategies I've used to construct meaning. I restated information verbally and in writing. I underlined sentences I thought were important. I exchanged words I don't use in my everyday talk with words I do. I circled unknown words such as igneous and silicate, drawing my attention to them and used strategies to help determine their meaning. I also developed visuals so I could restate and remember important concepts or ask for clarity for someone with more knowledge. I also used connections so I could connect new information to old ideas. Although I wouldn't read the entire chapter this way, I would actively read the sections that included the information I need to know, remember, and use for a quiz, a paper, a discussion, or an electronic post. When I read actively, I take in the information, stay engaged with the text, and remember what I've read. I feel confident that once I work through the remaining pages of this chapter, I'm going to be able to understand, remember, and use this information. Thank you for joining me today.